Hey guys, Master Tech Lou here on a quick video uh, using RTV silicone. So, a couple quick tips. When you get a tube like this and it has different levels, what that is is every time you cut it, there's a different thickness of bead that will come out of there. All right, so I got mine set at about two millimeters of, uh, of bead thickness. Every time you cut it, it'll expand it. Maybe four, maybe six, maybe seven, uh, maybe eight, you know, or you take the top off and just goop it on there. So one of the things that causes failure, premature failure of engines, transmissions, all that stuff, is using excessive amounts of RTV. When you're dealing with aluminum, these are machined surfaces, and you can tell by you see the actual machining smart, the machining marks, the swirls that are in the aluminum. All right, when you have someone that used a wire wheel or a cookie cutter, which we call uh, these guys, like the the Rolock discs, and these, and when you go to buzz it and clean it off, you actually eat up the aluminum and you take away the machining marks. So when we clean these surfaces, it's okay to have the machining marks and it's okay to see these stains as long as you can't feel them and they can't catch your finger. So things that we use to clean this stuff is we use plastic razor blades. Yes, they make them. They make them in all different uh, uh, sharp uh, edge sharpnesses. And we scrape until everything comes up as much as possible. All right, a nice clean surface. So if it's not catching with a nail and you can't feel it with your finger, and it's not causing an issue, not, not concerned with it. So now the reason I have these here is because I want to show you like the, the difference between a good bead and a bad bead. So the good bead, if I can do this here, I hate these tubes, would be like a nice itty bitty line like that. That's about one and a half to two millimeters of thickness, all right? Now a bad bead is something like this. And I'll show you the difference. So because these are machine surfaces, they're perfectly flat. The reason for the sealant is just to take up that little bit of imperfection in the sealing surfaces. So I'm putting this over here on a Corvette transmission. All right, I'm resealing the extension housing. So it's a transmission I'm dealing with. So you, like any uh, mechanical part, you don't want excessive sealant in there. Now. With this fine line, what happens is when you seal it and I tighten down the top guy, there's an itty bitty amount that squeezes out. That is all the excess. That's just about the same amount that I put in there. So right now, what you see on the outside is what's also gonna be on the inside. So that's a good indication that you have a decent amount or too much or too little. So if nothing squeezes out, you might have just not enough. If excessive amounts squeeze out, well, then you have excessive amounts inside there and it's getting into filters and valleys and passages and it's gonna clog stuff. All right, so that's a good, that's a good bead. And I'm not saying that because I did it, I'm saying it because I've practiced this over years. That's just an itty bitty amount that squeezes out. These are perfectly flat surfaces. So you're not taking up a whole lot of space. You're just adding a little bit of sealant so oil can't seep through there. So now, now that I have these good and bad beads, Here's gonna be the difference. Let me try to do this. We're gonna make these perfectly flat surfaces. This is no different. Okay, look at that. So with my little one millimeter bead, look how far it's spread out. It's spread out to about five millimeters. Now look at that fat bead we put there look how far that spread out so if i was doing this much amount on here that's so much more flowing into not only the housing but excessively on the outside and you can't compress a liquid so if we have too much in here and we're trying to mate the two surfaces and bolt them together you're actually going to warp the metal and or crack it because you have too much silicone in between there so it's very important to put the right the right bead and i always use the smallest the smallest one, which is the first cut. Again, it's about one and a half millimeters to two millimeters. Um, if I'm ever curious about a little spot, like see how this spot right here is a little bit narrow in there. If I was resealing it, I would just go ahead and touch it up just a little bit more before I put it together, right? But I just wanna give a quick video on sealant and I hope that this here shows you the difference between too much and not enough. 
So I got it made it up now, and there's just enough squeezing out. That is a very, very nice bead. Just enough to squish out because what's happening on the outside is also happening on the inside. So when you're using RTV, you are not making a gasket. All you're doing is filling in the imperfections between two machine surfaces. Right. This here is a very nice bead. And it's a little chunky right there, but it's good. And what I did was on the inside, I go inside the bolt holes since all the oil is on the inside. So you don't have to coat around the circle. And what most guys do, which is wrong, is they squirt the RTV out there. They do like this. They squirt the RTV. And then they run their finger over to do that. You do not want to do that. You're putting air and bubbles in there, which creates passages for oil to get through. You never want to spread away your finger. You just want a nice, easy bead. And then when it mates and the, and the bolt, the surfaces bolt together, it's going to squish itself out. So never do that. You don't want that. So hope this helps. When we're, when we're doing Mercedes silicone and sealant, it comes in a cool tube like this and it's supposed to come with a, a top. Well, I spent 20 bucks on this and the top did not come with it, so it's kind of useless. Well, what this goes into is a silicone gun applicator, which is this, All right? So if you're doing a lot of oil pan seals on other cars, you can buy this through Volkswagen, Audi, or Mercedes, or just Loctite, Loctite's who makes it. So you can find it through Loctite. What we do is we put this over the top Actually, the instructions are in the way. This goes over the top. It locks in. It presses in. Push it in, and just like a caulking gun, you just squeeze it, and a silicone comes out. All right, so I'll link the tool part number in the description along with the silicone tubes. So what I was getting at was I had to use this ultra black RTV and it's a really pain in the butt to try to roll this. And I thought, well, if you remember the old toothpaste holders from the day and some Volkswagen sealant actually comes with a little tuna can style thing, I thought, well, why don't I just use some pliers, right? And grab it and then I can squeeze it. And as I roll it, it would start to squeeze out the silicone, right? But then you got to keep tension on the pliers. And I thought, well, I have these hose clamp pliers. So what if I squeeze that on there, lock it down, now they're stuck on there, and I can just roll as needed a nice even bead. So there's a little tip and trick that I just had to figure out since I wasted money on that gun or the, the tube. So hope that helps. Two more things while I'm thinking about it. We actually have this sealant remover that's the Mercedes-Benz part number, but that's the Loctite tool number. And what you do is you spray this. I don't have a metal surface, so forgive me. So I will make one. What can I use? I don't want to use that. Let's use a piece of cardboard. So when you have silicone sealant and it's on whatever surface, you spray this on there. You give it about 15 to 20 minutes and it's gonna soften up. Then you can use the plastic razor blades that I showed you guys in another video that I used to clean them. We got plastic razor blades and it scrapes it right off, right? It's great. It, it makes it super easily removed. So you do not have to use harsh, harsh materials. And then once you're done, there's a cleaning spray. That's the part number there. It sprays on a nice clear film and it dries very nice. I mean, you won't see it on the rubber glove, but it'll dry and leave a nice clean film. So what I do is I spray this on the surface and I wipe it with a white rag, not a rag, but like a paper towel doesn't leave a lot of lint and I clean off the area and then you're able to apply your silicone. So these are two very, very important things that we use in the Mercedes dealership for removing silicone because you do not want to use abrasive products such as these guys. You do not want to use these on aluminum. Uh, more so, they're fine on cast iron because you don't use, you don't ruin the surface a whole lot. But aluminum, you do not use these. 
Also, you do not use metal razor blades. Do not use razor blades. You are not that much of a surgeon to where you can scrape the aluminum without gouging it. You must use a nice soft material. So, should be it for my tips, thanks.